We're now at Lesson 13.2c, Finding Probability Using a List. We can find the probability of an event by making an organized list of all the possible outcomes as the sample space. By making an organized list, we can keep track of all the possible outcomes without skipping or missing an outcome. In order to exit a level of a video game, we need a password that consists of three letters, A, B, and C. Any of these letters may be repeated and in any order. We need to find A, B, and C, or C, A, B, or A, A, A. We need to find all the possibilities. So we're trying to find this password to exit the level of the video game. We don't know what it is, but it's telling us to find the probability that the password is C-A-B. First thing we do is list all the passwords that may start with A. So all of these start with A. And they have A as the second letter. So in these boxes, we have A-A, and then for the third one, we have A-B-C. That's three different possible passwords. Then we list all the passwords that have A as the first letter and B as the second letter. So we have ABA, ABB, ABC. Now we've got six different possible passwords. The third thing we do is list all the passwords that start with A and have C as the second letter. So we have ACA, ACB, ACC. Now we have nine possible passwords. Now that we've listed all the passwords that begin with A, we repeat the process for passwords that begin with B. Then we list the passwords that begin with C. And we see there's 27 possible passwords. Our sample space consists of 27 possible password combinations. Now, it told us in the beginning that we needed to find the probability that the password is CAB, and here it is. We have 27 possible passwords, and one of them is CAB. CAB is one of 27 possible passwords. The probability that the password is CAB is 1 27th. The probability that the password is CAB, this is our event, is equal to the favorable outcomes. Well, there's only one that's CAB, so that's our numerator. Out of the possible outcomes, there's 27 possible outcomes. We have 1 27th. We can use the fundamental counting principle to find the sample space. We introduced that in the last lesson. Three possible first letters, three possible second letters, three possible third letters. We multiply three times three times three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. That tells us our sample space is 27. We can also do three cubed or three to the third power because we have three threes, don't we? We're multiplying 3 times 3 times 3, and that's equal to 27. We can use our list to find the probability that the password contains at least two C letters. We check our list and count all the C, C possibilities. They don't need to be next to each other. The password just needs to have two Cs. Checking our passwords that begin with A, I only see this one down here, the ninth one, that has two C's in it. So that's one that has two C's. Then checking our passwords that begin with B, I see another one that has two C's. So now we have a total of two for beginning with C. So remember we have two, here's three, here's four, here's five, here's six, here's seven. There are seven passwords that contain two letter C's. So the probability that a password is going to have two C's, we have the favorable outcomes, seven over the possible outcomes, there were 27 passwords, that's seven twenty-sevenths that it will have 
two C's in the password. Now be careful. It said that it would contain at least two. It didn't say exactly two. It said at least two. And we found seven passwords that had at least two. One had three, didn't it? That was our seventh one. If the password only contains the letters A and B, it's a two-letter password, what is the probability that it's AA? We make our list. We have AA, AB, BA, BB. The probability that it's AA is the favorable outcomes, there's only one, over the possible outcomes, there's four. It would be one-fourth. So remember, the sample space, this four, the sample space number is our denominator. We're finished with 13.2. We're moving on to 13.3. And we're going to be talking about using theoretical probability to make a quantitative prediction. When we're dealing with a list of all the possible outcomes, it's helpful to either circle them or make a little side list on scratch paper to show how many of the possibilities there are. Like when we were doing at least two C's, we can write that on scratch paper on the side or circle the ones that have two C's to make sure our count is correct. Have a great day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.